8.2 graph simple rational functions. Point of this comic, unidentified flying domains. They don't have zero divisors. Yay. So today we're going to learn about rational functions. And rational functions are of the form y or f of x equals p of x over q of x where p of x and q of x are polynomials and q of x does not equal zero. So q of x does not equal zero is for obvious reasons. We don't want to divide by zero. And what do I mean by polynomials? Well, polynomials are just what we've been doing all year so far. They can be linear, they can be quadratic, they can be cubic, and so forth. So basically what we're doing right now is we're taking two of the things that we've learned so far this year and we're dividing them by one another. So for example, I might have y equals x squared plus 5x divided by x plus 2. I might have y equals, I could even write it like x plus 5 times x plus 2 over x minus 7. Um, I could have y equals x cubed plus 7x squared plus 8 over x squared plus 5. You know, this is what I mean by rational functions. We're going to start with just a simple rational function of the form y equals 1 over x. And that is a graph of a hyperbola. So hyperbola is a new word that you should know. And basically it just means it uh, consists of two symmetrical branches here that I have. And the domain and range are going to always be all numbers except for 0. Because in this example here, I have two asymptotes. I have an asymptote at x equals 0. So this is my vertical asymptote, right? That's a vertical line, x equals 0. And I also have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Like that. And then basically I just draw in my branches like that. So any function of the form y equals a over x, where a does not equal 0, has the same asymptotes domain and range as y equals 1 over x because basically that a is just going to be our stretch, just like it's been all along. That does not affect the domain, the range, or the asymptotes. The so only thing that would affect that is our shifts, which we're going to see in two more slides. So first, let's just start with something simple. Let's graph y equals 4 over x. Let's start by drawing in our asymptotes at x equals 0 and at y equals 0. And then we have y equals 4 over x. So we know since it's stretched, we know that y equals 4 over x is further from the axis than y equals 1 over x. And if I was in a rush here and I just said draw a quick sketch, you know it would be something like this, just based on what we just learned. But let's please just do uh, three points for both of these branches and get something better drawn right now. So why don't I pick three positive points and I'll pick three negative x values. So let's see, uh, negative 4, negative 2, and negative 1 might be real easy values to put in there because 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1, 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2, and 4 divided by negative 1 is negative 4. And then obviously we can't put in 0 because that's where our asymptotes are, and so let's just put in 1, 2, and 4. And so 4 divided by 1 is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. I just, again, tried to pick some easy points since I knew I was doing 4 divided by that number. So let me erase what I wrote and just plot these points. So my graph is going to look something like this. Please make sure that you're extending your lines along the asymptote that gets real close. It just doesn't touch it, okay? 
So now when we do a simple transformation, I hope you're getting this H and K thing down by now. That just means that you shift H units right and K units up. Notice that the H is attached to this X, so that's how you know H units right, and then the K is standing out by itself, so it's K units up. So let's start with the vertical asymptote because that's a bit easier. The vertical asymptote is just x equals h, and that's simply because it used to be at x equals 0, and now we've gone h units right, and so it's going to be at x equals h. But another thing that I want to point out, when you're looking for the vertical asymptote, it's just like looking for the domain restriction here, I want you to be thinking about what can x not be? Well, we know thou shall not divide by zero. So that x minus h should not be equal to zero. In other words, that x should not be equal to h. So that's going to be our domain restriction, and that's where our vertical asymptote is going to be in this example. Now, our horizontal asymptote, now let's think about our horizontal asymptote. Well, since we just shifted k units up and the asymptote used to be at y equals 0, it's now going to be at y equals k. But what I want you to think about when you think horizontal asymptote is what happens to y when x gets huge or really, really small. And let me explain what I mean. Let's look back at this example. You'll see that the horizontal asymptote is asking what happens to y over here when x gets tiny and over here when x gets huge. And I don't expect you to totally understand this right now. You're going to learn a lot more about it next year and more about it in calculus. But that is the question you're asking when you're saying, what's the horizontal asymptote? What happens when x is teeny tiny or when x is humongous? Remember when we did the limit as x approaches infinity? Remember when we did the limit as x approaches negative infinity? That's what I'm talking about, that end behavior stuff that we we're talking about at the beginning of the year. So first step, let's just look at this equation. y equals a over huge number plus k. Note, I left out the h because if I do some humongous number and I subtract out h, like 3 or something, it's still going to be just a huge number. So I don't even care about that h. I'm talking x is so huge, like a billion or something like that. Well, some number, let's say 3. 3 divided by a billion. 3 divided by a billion is practically 0. So I have something close to 0 plus k. Well, that's going to be about y equals k. And that's how I get the horizontal asymptote. All right, so as always, some of you are going to be understanding this really well right now, and some of you, it's not going to make so much sense right now. If you're one of those people that is kind of confused, then just remember that the horizontal asymptote is at y equals k if it's of this form, and that the vertical asymptote is at x equals h if it's of this form. I'm going to do some examples right now. So you'll see that this is of the form y equals a over x minus h plus k. The domain, of course, is everything except 1, all real numbers except for 1, because the vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals 1. The horizontal asymptote, of course, is just going to be at y equals positive 2, because I shifted everything two units up. So the range is going to be all real numbers except for 2. So let me just go ahead and draw those asymptotes in. Let's just plot some points. We know that our graph is not going to be here and here because this is a negative, so it's going to actually reflect. So everything's going to be reflected, so we're thinking it's going to be down here and up here. So let's see if that happens. Obviously, it's going to happen, but let's see. I want to pick some easy things. So x could be 0. I like to think negative 3 divided by negative 3, so maybe put in a negative 2 for x. 
let's see, we can't put in one, we could put in two, that'll be easy, and then three divided by three, that would have to be a four to make it a three, so I just chose those points so that I don't have any fractions. See if you can do the same. Negative three divided by negative three is going to be one, one plus two is three, negative three divided by negative one is three, three plus two is five, Negative three divided by one is negative three. Negative three plus two is negative one. Put in a four, so we get negative three divided by three is negative one. Negative one plus two is one. So let's plot these. So this graph is exactly where I thought it was gonna be, and we should know the general shape. We've got to make sure we're going with the general shape here. And that's a good sketch. Now here, notice that it's not of the right form. It's not y equals a over something plus something. No, not at all. The top is not just a simple a. And so it's easiest to think of the vertical asymptote in the domain. So let's think of the domain first. We know that x plus 2 should not be equal to 0. In other words, x should not be equal to negative 2. So the domain is all real numbers except for negative 2. Our vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals negative 2. Now, when we want to think about our range or our horizontal asymptote, let's think about x being a huge number. Let's think about x being a billion. If x was 1 billion, then I would have y equals 3 billion minus 6 over 1 billion plus 2. Well, 3 billion minus 6 is practically 3 billion, right? It's not that much smaller. And 1 billion plus 2 is practically 1 billion. In other words, the ratio is just 3 because 3 billion over 1 billion is just 3. And that's how I get the horizontal asymptote. The horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals 3. So our range is going to be all real numbers except for y equals 3. I guess I've been lazy and I haven't been writing the all real numbers part. Of course, ideally, I want to look as x gets teeny, teeny, tiny, too. But for these examples, it's just not going to matter. So just think as x gets huge. All right, so x equals negative 2. y equals 3, let's plot some points. Let's try negative 6, negative 4, negative 1, and 4. If I put in negative 6, I get negative 24 over negative 4 or 6. If I put in negative 4, I get negative 18 over negative 2 or 9. If I put in negative 1, I get negative 9 over 1. If I put in a 4, I get 6 over 6 or 1. So let me just plot those. And so let me just extend this up. It's going to look all the way up there. Make sure it's leveling off here. And oops, this point was supposed to be over here. So again, make sure it's leveling off there and leveling off over here. Finally, your long distance calling plan has a fixed monthly fee of $4.95 and costs five cents a minute. Write an equation that gives you your average cost per minute during a given month. So we know that our cost is just that $4.95 plus five cents per minute. And so the average cost per minute is just that same thing, our cost, divided by m. We could break that down by dividing each term by m. So we get 495 over m 
plus 0.05. And that's going to make it easier to graph. And that's easiest because that's my simple case that I was looking at at the very beginning of this lesson where I have something over x plus k. That's going to be my k there. There is no h right here. When we go to graph this function, well, let's just think about our horizontal asymptote and our vertical asymptote. Our vertical asymptote just at x equals 0. There was no x shift here. However, our horizontal asymptote is at 0 0.05 here because we shifted 0.05 units up. So our minutes are going to be here and our cost per minute is going to be on this axis. We know we have this horizontal asymptote here at 0 0.05. Our graph is just going to look something like this. And of course, there would have been something down here. But since I'm talking minutes, I really don't want any negative stuff going on. Um, here's the other asymptote. So I really just need to be graphing this part. It would actually be wrong if I graphed that part because it just is nonsensical. I can't have negative minutes. I can't have a negative cost. So I really don't want to be graphing over here in this region. This tells me to use a graph to estimate when the average cost is 14 cents per minute. So basically I'm trying to say when is the cost equal to 14 cents per minute. So that's probably somewhere around here. I need to say when is that happening. So what is that point? Um, I'm really going to need my graphing calculator right now and to find that intersection point. Again, I know this is a y equals thing because my cost per minute is the y variable. So I'm looking for when y equals 0.14. In other words, when does my original graph 4.95 over m plus 0.05, when does it intersect with y equals 0.14? So my calculator in Y1, I'm going to put my equation 4.95 divided by X plus 0.05. My Y2, I'm going to put 0.14. And now I'm going to change my window. Well, you could just graph this. But obviously where we're talking about, it's like so teeny tiny, I can't even see what's going on right now. So I know that my X values never go below zero. And I don't know what Y value I'm going to. So I'm going to just do 100 right now to be safe. And my Y values also never go less than zero. And look, I'm looking for when does Y equal 0.14, which is a pretty tiny number. So I'm just going to go up to 0.16 or something that's not too far away from that. And let's graph it. And we're going to get a very zoomed in portion right here. Remember, these are such teeny tiny numbers, um, even though they look huge right here. Remember your scale. So I need to find that intersection point. So all your calculations are under second calc. And let's do the intersect. And you just go on top of the point that you think it is three times in this one. First curve, enter, second curve. You just press enter three times. And that's your intersection point. X equals 55, Y equals point one four so we had 55.14 so the answer to that question is after 55 minutes what happens to the average cost per minute as the number of minutes increases? Well, as the number of minutes increases, obviously the cost goes down, but in this case it actually approaches 5 cents. And that's because that 5 cents is our asymptote. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.